Hello and welcome to another ZX81 video. This time I'm going to be doing something different. I'm going to be showing you how I go about packaging a ZX81 standalone um, auto running um, machine code game. How I finish it off essentially. So um, without uh, further delay let's, uh, let's get into that. The first thing we have to do is make sure that the game's finished. Well the last thing I usually do in the game is put in the um, the crema interface stuff with the, the colour as you can see on the screen here uh, and the uh, Quicksilver character um, board um, again you can see the characters have been redefined and I'll just start the game up and you can see we've got some custom defined characters you've got sort of like I don't know pink faces rather like the pigs you find in Amidar and then the uh, the roller um, which is uh, one of the sprites you get to control in the game uh, in the arcade, so that's all. That's all in there and working. So, as you can see, the score goes up every bit of um, line that we paint, which is something that was missing in my um, first uh, video about this game. Um, but yeah, that all seems to be in order. So, first thing I'm going to do now is. Let's switch this back to uh, standard ZX81 font. Right, uh, the first thing we have to do is find out just how big that file is. 4824 bytes. Now unfortunately you can't save code files on a ZX81 it all has to go into REM statements. Lots and lots of REM statements. Or rather, one very, very, very big REM statement. Um, so the first thing we're going to have to do in BASIC is we're going to have to write a little BASIC program which automatically saves the game out and then runs it uh, with a RAND USR call and then we're going to have to put a REM statement where all the code goes. So, first of all, let's put in the save. So, oops. Okay, here's my simple basic um, program to save the game Amido. As you can see, the first line is the instruction to save the game. And what the ZX81 does when it saves from within a basic program is it basically saves the entire the state of the, the ZX81. So um, it will um, continue running from the point after the save instruction once the game is reloaded. So the next instruction is the instruction to run the game, which is the RAND USR. Now, during testing, I located the code at 18,000, um, but now I've got to locate it in a REM statement, which is line 30 there. And if you see, um, 16546 is the address of that um, dot there. Uh, I'll prove that to you because the rem statement before it is uh, 545. That's the code for a rem statement in the ZX81 manual. If you don't believe me, look it up. Um, so the game is set to run from that address, but we're also building in, um, if I can find the mouse cursor. Um, we're also setting the line length in of, of line 30 and putting the rem in there, so we're basically moving it back about three bytes, uh, and then I stick a 118 on the end, which is the new line, so it, it all sort of tickety-boo, uh, so the ZX81 shouldn't complain. Um, the only problem I have then is that I have to go back to the ZX81 listing, and I have to make sure that rem is huge, or at least there are... Me well, th there are lots and lots of REMs so that it will fill out the rest of the memory. And I've got about 4K of um, dots, full stops, periods, whatever you want to call them, to uh, to put in there. So that's going to take me a while, so I'm not going to film that. OK, so I've now got the REM statements in there, and those should be more than enough to cope with the size of the binary file that I'm going to insert into the code. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start a new tape 
and then I'm going to load a memory block. So that's my binary, that's my address, 16543, three below the RAM USR address to cope with the REM statements and the two bytes that tell the basic um, ROM how long the line is, and then I load the file. And then I just run. And that should save the program and then auto run it. And there we have it. So now all that remains is for me to Save the tape, as Amido versus a TZX, and then I'll do it as ZX81.p file. And that is the process complete. I'm going to load the binary, load the file, and then I just type run. And that doesn't work. Guys, like, comment, share or subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I also have a Patreon account for those who want to support new Spectrum and ZX81 software development.